Like the quadratic function in standard form, identify its vertex, axis of symmetry, and x-intercepts. We don't have to do these in the particular order that that sentence is written. Um, in fact, it may be easier just to go right to identifying x-intercepts. If you take your function and you set it equal to zero, when y is zero, when you solve for x, you will find locations, sometimes just one, sometimes none, where the graph intersects or touches the x-axis. x squared minus 4x plus 4, if you factor it, will factor as x minus 2 times x minus 2. Since these factors are identical, you only need to take one of them and solve for x, you get x equals 2. Now, in a case of repeated factors, your graph will touch the x-axis instead of cross through it. We'll talk about that more later. Uh, so your x-intercept is the point 2, 0. When x is 2, the y value is 0. Also, pay attention over here back to your left when you factor as x minus 2 times x minus 2. You can write that once and just give it a square. Since adding zero doesn't change the value of the function, you have successfully written it in standard form, sometimes called vertex form. Your vertex is located at opposite of the number in parentheses and same as the number on the outside. So this function has a, also has a vertex at two zero. The axis of symmetry is the vertical line that cuts through the vertex at its x value. So this is the shape of the x squared graph with correct vertex x-intercept. Go back to your function g of x. If you replace all the x's with a 0, you will get 4, and that's your y-intercept. This problem didn't ask for y-intercept, but that's how you can find it. Substitute 0 in for all your x's, because on the y-axis, all your x's are 0. So y-axis replace x with 0, x-axis replace y with 0. The second function we'll look at is g of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 1. Um, if we choose to do x-intercepts first, just remember you replace your function with the value of 0. Let's solve for x. Now, unlike the example above, this one won't factor with whole numbers, so we can fall back on quadratic formula. A is 1, B is negative 4, and C is positive 1. So substitute your numbers carefully. We get positive 4 in the upper left, 2 in the denominator, and the discriminant 16 minus 4 is 12. Well, since square root of 12 can be reduced to 2 square root of 3, that's over here in the red, we can rewrite that radical term as 2 square root of 3. 4 plus or minus 2 square root of 3 all over 2. These three numbers are all divisible by 2, so let's do that. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. You don't have to write 1 if it's a coefficient. And you don't have to write 1 if it's a denominator. 2 plus square root of 3 and 2 minus square root of 3 are your x-intercepts. In class, we approximated these with a calculator, and that helped us place these two pink dots on the x-axis. You can approximate those locations with a calculator. Go back to your original function. Again, we're not asked to find a y-intercept, but it's easily defined. If you replace x's with 0, 1 will be your answer. So when x is 0, y is 1, that gives us a y-intercept of 0, 1. This function will be a little bit challenging to write in standard form so that we can identify the vertex. We'll use the process of completing the square. So first, subtract 1 from both sides. In other words, collect your x terms together, move everything else to one side. Half of negative 4 is negative 2, and that's down here. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. The square is what you add to both sides. That's done in orange. That gives us g of x plus 3 equals. This right side will factor as 
x minus 2 twice. And then we subtract the 3 back over. That gives us our same function, but it's just in standard form. Your vertex is easily identifiable as opposite, which is 2, and same, which is negative 3. 2, negative 3 marks the bottom of the graph. Axis of symmetry is x equals the first number out of your vertex. This is our graph based on the evidence we collected. We have a new function, g of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 19. If we come over here to the side, use the quadratic formula to find x-intercepts because this one won't factor with whole numbers to give us some friendly x-intercepts. In fact, it turns out there are no x-intercepts, but you don't know that until you go through this process. Uh, minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac over 2 times a. Put your numbers through the quadratic formula. This time we get a discriminant of negative 4. A discriminant that's negative tells us we have two complex zeros. The square root of negative 4 is 2i. So we have negative 8 plus or minus 2i all over 2. Divide all these by 2, and that gives you negative 4 plus or minus i. When you have complex zeros, you don't have any real numbers for x-intercepts. And that's okay. These graphs don't always have to cross or touch the x-axis. Let's get our vertex. Go back to the original function. Let's subtract 19, and that gives us our x terms grouped together, everything else on one side. Half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. This perfect square is what you add to both sides. Don't forget this half number because it will factor your right side twice. Both of these get used. The square is what you add to both sides. The half value is what factors that side twice. Negative 19 plus 16 is negative 3. And so resolving for g of x, you add 3 back over, and your vertex will be opposite and same. That's the point, negative 4, positive 3. Axis of symmetry is x equals negative 4. Since your vertex is at negative 4, 3, and your x squared term in the original function is positive, that vertex is your lowest point. So when your graph opens upward, it gives you no x-intercepts. And that just goes hand in hand with complex zeros. And then in class, we did a brief example of if I give you a graph with a vertex and a y-intercept, um, it is possible to go backwards and write the standard form of your quadratic function. The standard form of a quadratic function is either f of x or y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where h, k Remember, it's always going to be the opposite in parentheses. So HK is what your vertex is. Well, down here the, at the very lowest point, we have the vertex of negative 1, negative 5. So H is negative 1. K is negative 5. We also have an XY point that happens to be the Y intercept at 0, negative 4. We can replace X with 0 and Y with negative 4. So replacing your vertex, those are the plum colored numbers, and substituting in the other point given, x, y, we have all kinds of numbers except for a. Negative 4 equals a times 1 squared, that's 1a, minus 5. Add 5 to both sides, you get a equals 1. So that means... There's an unwritten 1 here, and that's just because we got an A value of 1. Now, if we'd have got an A equals 2 or a 3, this graph would be narrower, and we'd have to put that A value out in front of the parentheses. So 
plugging a back in as a one, we get y equals x plus one quantity squared minus five, which by now you know that's the vertex. Opposite, same, that's negative one, negative five. If you replaced x with zero, one squared minus five is four, so that also covers that y-intercept. 